So, have you always lived in Augusta? Yeah, well, about 34 out of 38 years. Okay. Um, so, how did you end up in Augusta? Uh, born here, yeah. So, for me, it's the same. I was born and raised in Augusta. Okay. Um, so, my home is like a two-story, five-bedroom, single-family kind of home. Could you tell me what kind of home you live in? Yeah, two-story, five-bedroom. Um, so, have you ever invested in solar, either rooftop on your home, on your property, or as part of a business, or as part of a program through your unit? No, I have not. Okay. Have you ever thought about adopting solar? Yes. Okay. So... Um, when you were thinking about it, was that an option made for you or like you made it for yourself up uh, to not? Made for myself, just being in the technology world okay. and seeing information about it. If you had the option to put rooftop solar on your home, would you? Yes. Okay. So why would you? Well, um, mainly to help the earth, mainly to hopefully save me money or energy, basically. Um, and so to look cool, actually. To look cool? To look cool, too. Okay. Um, so, I'd like to talk a little bit about solar adoption in general. I'm going to give you this map of the United States. So, if you could just mark an X or circle wherever you think solar is mostly adopted in the country. I don't know about that. Okay. So, um, why do you, what makes those areas different from Georgia? So, for me, California is more progressive, um, more like cutting edge technology. Um, the demographics, it seems like they might care more about the environment more, at least perception wise. So, that's why I picked California. And Florida could get a lot of sunshine, so it would make sense if they utilize that. So. Uh, Texas, just because it's a big state, but now that I think about it, it might not, since they depend so much on oil and stuff okay. like that. What's this one? Nevada? I don't think that's Nevada. I don't know what that is. Or whatever state that is, because they're close to California. Okay. So what kind of people do you think lives in those areas that you mark? Uh, I would say higher scale, uh, higher income. Like I said, more progressive, probably less conservative. Okay. Um, so why do you think those people in those areas would be more willing to adopt solar? Um, would you say it's more of like an environment thing or just because the way the community is in those I areas? definitely would say, I would say a mixture of both now that I think about it. Definitely an environmental issue. Um, but once, I think in California, um, once a few people say this is the way you should go, mm -hmm. that they're more willing to follow. Um, so yeah. it might be some more pressure for that community too to do okay. something like that. So now we're going to do the same thing, but with the state of Georgia. So just mark what areas or circle what areas you think in Georgia. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. So what makes those two areas different from, say, Augusta? Uh, kind, of, kind of the same thing, more higher scale. Um, and I would imagine a lot more businesses, especially in Santa Springs, will utilize um, solar energy. So that might kind of... It's one thing to... Like, I know about it because of technology, but more often, if people get a chance to see it, then they'll actually look into it. So they might have a more of a chance to see it in Santa Springs and Augusta or other areas. Okay. So what kind of people do you think lives in those communities? Uh, higher scale, higher income. Um, I don't know if they'll be more progressive, um, but they would definitely wouldn't value put. They wouldn't mind putting the upfront cost to something that might save them money at the end of the day, okay. or a few years. Um. Okay. What about your close friends in Georgia? Do any of them have rooftop solar that you know of? No. Why do you think they don't? Uh. That's a good question. Most of them, one, they don't, they don't see it, so they might not, they might not know it's an option. Honestly, I don't see that many advertisements about solar energy in the Augusta area, so they might not even know that it's an option for their homes and for the cost too. I, I think the upfront cost might be a little bit more than they can, can bear. Gotcha. 
So now, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask a few questions regarding the role of food in your day-to-day life. So, if you will, tell me about your regular day with food. What do your meals and snacks typically look like? Uh, your typical meats and vegetables, um, chicken, a lot of broccoli. Um, normally, eat about two or three times a day with a protein bar in between those. Okay, so for me, like, my favorite go-to snack will be something like, um, something quick that's in the pantry, like okay. Cheez-Its or, uh, mm-hmm. an apple or something like that. Yeah. So, could you tell me what your go-to meal is and why? Okay, um, go-to is either probably apples or a protein bar. Okay. Both because one small amount can give me kind of, not full, but not as hungry as I was before. And like you said, it's a lot quicker than cooking a full meal at one time. Okay, so how often do you cook your own meals? That's a good question. About three times a week. About three times. So are you the only person that makes the decisions about food and your food purchases in your household? No, my wife does. And to a lesser extent, my kids does as well. So, what roles do they play? Uh, so, the kids kind of determine what we get sometimes because they don't eat a lot of the food that we want to buy. Um, and my wife, basically, she buys, sometimes she buys the food and cook it without mine, I guess. Um, so, how often do you purchase food for your household? It's about three, three or four times a week. Um, in small batches, that's how we do it also. So, if you could paint this picture for me, um, let's say you're taking a trip to purchase food. What does that look like? Hopefully, it's me by myself because um, I can get in and get out. Um, and I normally travel about 20, 20 minutes to go to my favorite grocery store. Um, I have an app that I use to kind of put a list of the things that I need to get and uh, get shot. Um, so when it comes to feeding your family, what are some challenges you face? For example, my family is like picky eaters and then a few food allergies that we have to take okay. into consideration. Yeah, um, picky eaters for my kids. And for me, I normally eat a low carb diet. Okay. So that kind of plays, it limits kind of what my wife decides to get sometimes. Um, normally try to get healthier food so it costs a little bit more. Um, that's about it.